I love tech and I love home labs. Home labs are one of these great things where you can actually learn and play different sorts of technologies for personal learning. Maybe you're working in a company or somebody in technology. Maybe you're wanting to work in technology in the future and you just need a space to actually play around with some awesome tech. Stuff that will help you learn more and maybe get a good job or get a better job, whatever the case may be. We're gonna talk about a $100 budget for building a home lab. Now, a home lab comes in a wide range of configurations of sizes of setups, right? You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a really good home lab and get yourself something like a full server rack. I mean, here's an example of my home lab. This is what I've got. You'll see that straight off the bat, I've got a server rack. I've got a few switches. I've got some storage devices like NASs. I've got some full-fledged servers as well down the very bottom. And I've also got all these little, little computers that are running virtualization technology. And that looks really, really good. It looks really, really great. But that, that did cost me a fair bit of money. But you don't need something that big to get started. The first thing you need to do before you even get started is actually have a sit down and have a think and plan out what you want your home lab to be. What is the purpose of your home lab? Do you want it for your own learning? Do you want it to learn for a business? Do you want to learn certain technologies? Like if you want to learn Linux, or well maybe you want to go and build your home lab for that purpose. You get the tech, you get the software to be able to build a Linux environment. If you want to learn about virtualization, if you want to learn about storage, if you want to know more about networking, switching, routing, different sorts of protocols in the networking space, security, whatever it may be, the best thing is to go and build your home lab around that. Now, the good thing is that just to get started with a home lab, you don't really need a whole bunch. As long as you know what you want to build and what you want to learn, you can get started for really not that much at all. If you want to know a whole bunch more about home labs, and, and if you're like me, I love home labs and I want to continue to learn and continue to get better in technology. I've designed and built a whole full length training course just on the home lab. In the show notes of this video, you can actually go and check that one out. We talk about how to build it, ideas, what you could be building, and it'll help you to become a better tech, a better person at building a home lab. And then you can actually go and expand your home lab learning a lot more. Now, before we start talking about the gear that you need, hopefully you've already now had to think about what sort of stuff you want to be testing on your home lab. Of course, the great thing about the home lab is you can learn new tech. Well, what sort of stuff do I have in my home lab? Well, something that I've always got in my home lab is I've got a mix of Windows and Linux servers. Now, these are virtual servers. They're VMs, virtual servers, VMs, virtual servers. I'm using a technology called VMware. VMware ESXi is essentially an operating system that you can download completely for free off the VMware website. Just go into Google, type in download VMware ESXi for free. You can use it completely for free in a home lab environment. And then you actually install this onto a PC. So let's say you had a PC that was running Windows 8 old operating system, you can remove that and then install this VMware ESXi and then you're converting this computer into what's called a hypervisor. And then you can actually connect to this and start building VMs within your host itself, within your computer itself. So rather than having one physical computer running Windows, another physical computer running Linux, you could have one physical computer running ESXi, but then within it, it's maybe running five or six VMs inside of this one physical computer. And you could build a Windows 11 VM. You could build a Windows Server VM. You could build a Red Hat, Linux Red Hat VM. You could play around with Kali Linux. There's a whole range of VMs you could potentially build for your learning. And then from that, you can then go and start deploying things such as Active Directory, DNS, DHCP. You could deploy a web server. You could set up some proxies. You could build a whole bunch of stuff from there. But in short, the great thing is that you don't need one physical computer for each individual thing, for each individual server. You can actually get yourself an old computer or a couple of old computers and actually repurpose them to start building your home lab. You then build on that and then you can make a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger home lab. I didn't start with a rack and didn't start with all this equipment in there. I gradually built myself up to that home lab because I wanted to learn more and more and more different sorts of tech, different sorts of technologies, right? Networking systems, security, storage, 
I then started getting that equipment to start learning that. And then of course I put it all inside of a nice rack so I could keep it all in one single location. You can really build any sort of computer, an old laptop, an old desktop, maybe it's running Windows, Linux, the Mac, whatever it may be, and you can actually repurpose it, install some software onto that to actually convert it into a server. Virtualization, you wanna learn a little bit about servers, maybe a Windows server. You wanna learn a little bit about Linux. Maybe you wanna play around with some of the Linux technologies. Well, what you need is a simple, simple computer to get started. Now, if you already have yourself an old computer, you're in a good spot. You're already in a good position because most old computers can actually be repurposed to actually be set up as a home lab. That's brilliant. A computer that you used to use, but now it's just stuck in a cabinet, maybe going and asking your friends and family if they've got any computers that they no longer use, can you get them? Maybe somebody is selling them very, very cheap online, which is where I would start. Go onto eBay, go onto online shopping places that are selling secondhand stuff and look for an old PC, an old laptop or an old desktop. That's really what you need to get started. If you're getting yourself an old desktop, of course you need to plug it in to a screen, into a keyboard and mouse. You may wanna spend another 20 bucks to actually get yourself a screen and a keyboard and mouse. Maybe you've got an old one and then you can at least have that. If you're testing technologies, if you're testing certain things and you're doing this in a home environment, you may not want to interfere or interrupt the rest of your network. So it may actually be a good idea to have it separated from the rest of your network. If you don't already have a switch, if you don't have a modem router at home that has some network points, maybe you wanna build your home lab in a completely separate network, which is generally good. What you could do is then you could pick up a small little switch, a little five port switch where you can actually plug in your computer. If you've got some cash left over, when you wanna get a lot more fancy and when you wanna build your home lab, you probably wanna invest in something that's called a NAS, a network attached storage. Here's a NAS that I've got. I've got myself a Synology NAS. I've got a couple of these and these are great because I can store a whole bunch of data onto them. And then all of my home lab equipment, all of my servers and all of that can then actually use the storage that is being centrally managed and stored in this NAS, in this network attached storage. But I would at least invest in a external hard drive of some sort, an external hard drive where you can dump a whole bunch of stuff and have that as your central spot where maybe you can store a whole bunch of your data. So for your PCs that you've got, if you've got one or two PCs that you've purchased and the hard drives inside are not very big, you may wanna look at getting yourself an external hard drive to actually bump up that storage because the more storage you've got, the bigger and better your home lab can be. If you don't have enough cash for that $100 budget to go and actually buy an external case, external hard drive, you could also go and buy yourself a secondhand hard drive. Just go onto eBay and look for maybe a 500 gig SATA hard drive. You can pick some of these up quite cheap online and then you can actually stick it inside of the case of this old computer. When you are looking for what computers you could be buying, if you've got some old computers, great. That means you've got some extra cash that you could spend on other things. If you wanna take advantage of the virtualization technology that we talked about, VMware ZSXi, and you wanna build a whole bunch of VMs, be sure that you get something that is not super slow. The more VMs you have, the more resources you need. The more RAM you need, the more hard drive space you need, the more CPU you need. Let's give you an example. I've got a physical computer that I've gone and bought on eBay and inside of it, there's 16 gig of RAM and you go, great, that's more than enough. How much more do I need than that? And you're gonna go and build maybe a Windows Server VM and you need to allocate some CPU, some RAM storage to it. How much are you gonna allocate? Well, maybe you wanna allocate eight gig of RAM to it. So you give eight gig of RAM to that VM. What's gonna happen there is that eight gig of RAM is now being shared to that VM from your 16 gig that you had on the computer itself, on the physical computer that's now running ESXi. You then wanna go and build another VM. You wanna go build yourself a CentOS VM. You wanna give four gig of RAM to that. You then go and build yourself a Kali Linux VM and you wanna give four gig of RAM to that. Well, you've already hit now 16 gig of RAM and that's it. You've run out of options. You can't really build anything more. You could run all three VMs at once but they're not gonna run as good because you're now sharing the resources between all of these VMs. So the more resources you've got, 
the more VMs you can actually build and have running at the same time. But that is the key right there, having them running at the same time. You could still potentially build 20, 30 VMs and have them all hosted on one physical computer. You just don't have them all powered on at the same time. Because if you powered them all on at the same time, you're gonna run into problems, you're gonna run out of resources, CPU, RAM is all gonna be used up on that computer. But you could power some on, play around with them, shut them down, power the other VMs on, play around with them, shut them down. So you can mix and match if you want. You now need to have a think about where you're gonna physically put all of this stuff. Of course, in my case, I had my server rack and that's where I decided, hey, this is a nice place to be able to store my entire home lab. You may not be able to do that because a rack is gonna cost you a little bit more money to get something like this, but you don't need something like this. Find yourself a space somewhere in your home that you can actually store this thing. Right? You're gonna need network cables, you're gonna need adequate power, and hopefully a spot that isn't too hot. Because a home lab, especially if you're gonna be running it for extended periods of time, you wanna make sure that it's a good ventilated area. So don't just stick it into a cabinet, into a closet somewhere, because it may work for time to time, you may need, need to just keep doors open, but then if you want it running all the time, it's gonna get quite hot quite quickly. Let us know down below what gear you have got or what gear you're gonna be getting for this home lab. I'd love to know. Hey, I release videos every week on tech. If you wanna know more about the home lab, as I said, I've got a link down below. Go and check that out on a full length training course. Subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for that next video where we continue to talk about all things tech. We'll see you next time.